a strong, intelligent female main character and her flight crew enter space, only to discover that they must face monstrous creatures. One of the crew members is accidentally attacked by a facehugger and succumbs to its embrace. Over time, the creature inside the victim grows and bursts out, causing excruciating pain before transforming into a xenomorph. In one way or another, almost all of the crew members meet their demise. However, the female main character, with her determination and agility, manages to kill the bloodthirsty creature and survive after a challenging journey. While there may be variations, this is a recurring theme in the iconic Alien franchise, making the film series a symbol of popular culture. Despite its declining success at the box office, why do we continue to be drawn to female protagonists? Why do we have to look at someone's belly and assume that they will be poisoned by a long-headed alien? And why do we need alien Romulus? The doubt surrounding this film has been palpable since its announcement. It's even more concerning now that Ridley Scott is no longer at the helm, as his return to the franchise with Prometheus and Convenant was met with mixed reviews. However, when our astronomers claim to have seen the quality of the film, it can be both surprising and satisfying. Alien Romulus suddenly becomes a thrilling experience. It abandons the convoluted storyline about the origins of mankind that the Covenant embraced and ultimately lost its direction in. Romulus returns to the right path, delivering a tense and engaging experience. The essence of Alien, Space, Monster, and Z-Truck films lies in their ability to create a thrilling and terrifying experience for viewers. In these films, xenomorphs hunt down humans in order to create living creatures, while humans struggle to survive by putting coins in their heads. Director Fede Alvarez, known for his mastery in creating tension in films like Don't Breathe, impressively revived the space monster genre in his dark and mysterious story. I can confidently say that Romulus is only second in quality to the first two classic Alien films. According to John Wayne Carradine, the film follows a group of friends who are trying to escape from the Weyland yutani group and their troubled past. In their quest for a better life, they explore an abandoned ship and attempt to steal frozen food for resources. However, their plans are derailed when they discover the truth about the ship and are forced to flee from the deadly facehugger creatures. We must fight against creatures we have never encountered before. If you have seen the first two parts of Alien, you will understand that one of the key factors contributing to its success and critical analysis is the background design. The mysterious and claustrophobic narrow spaces, the darkness and low ceilings, the long and numerous corners all contribute to a sense of unease. The biomechanical style, known as Jigger's biomechanics, depicts the fusion of mechanical and organic parts, with the creatures moving like living beings adorned with machine-like elements on their bodies. The film's production designer, Nathan Marshall, is responsible for the sets of both The Dark Knight and Planet of the Apes. He worked alongside cinematographer Gallo Olivares on the film crew of Roma, and together they have successfully recreated the atmosphere of Romulus in an excellent manner. The use of lighting is particularly impressive and captures our attention. The combination of horror and surprise with sudden appearances from the blind spots of the camera is a new and thrilling experience. As the characters move to different locations, the tension and drama only intensify. The world depicted in the film brings back memories of 80s sci-fi movies. The residential area where Rain lives resembles the setting of Blade Runner. And when you board the ship and encounter the monsters, the interior design and layout mimic those of Alien 1. The purpose of incorporating these elements from older films is evident in this scene. This iconic shooting scene. They were all built to please loyal fans. And if you hear the familiar electronic sound, the composer for the film, Benjamin Wallfish, is the man behind the success of Blade Runner 2049 and two parts of the film, It. Romulus can be described as possessing all the strengths of the sci-fi and monster genres, with its sound quality being exceptionally high. However, Romulus' story may come across as old-fashioned and far-fetched. It follows a group of explorers who venture to the wrong place and ultimately pay the price for their curiosity. The fate of the characters is highly predictable, with the first one being snatched by the facehugger and the second one becoming a victim of Genomorph's reincarnation. This pattern continues until only the final characters are left. Furthermore, the story may disappoint longtime fans of the Alien franchise as it fails to provide any new information about the monsters, despite being set between Alien 1979 and Aliens 1986. Although the story does not feature a cyberpunk city like its predecessors, it also fails to delve into the lives of ordinary people who are under the control of Wayland yutani 
Questions such as how they managed to escape and how they were exposed are left unanswered, with only one or two scenes briefly touching on the subject through the character of Ren, who has been working for the company for five years. The debt must be paid. The remaining details are conveyed through the dialogue, causing all the uncertainties to dissipate. This is a significant vulnerability for those seeking to exploit the growth of the foreign realm. However, do not anticipate too much, as it is unlikely to be included in Romulus's plan. Not everything in this story is bad. In Aliens, the tension is well maintained when Ripley not only saves her own life, but also has to protect Newt. Similarly, the highlight of this story lies in the relationship between Rain and his brother Andy, who by chance is also impoverished as a child. Will this small family survive, or will one have to make a sacrifice? It can be said that the love between Rain and Andy is the only storyline that has the power to capture the audience's attention until the end of the character. Andy himself also has a rather interesting journey. He is constantly given orders to complete tasks for the delivery company and leave his sister behind. It's quite amusing that a machine undergoes the most impressive psychological transformation process. On the other hand, the strong, intelligent, stereotypical female character is quite one-dimensional and is only convincing enough thanks to the elegance of the young actress Kelly Spanny. However, all of the aforementioned factors only contribute to 50% of the success of the film. The true star of every Alien installment is undoubtedly the Xenomorph, the epitome of perfection in the film industry. It is not easy for the Neomorphs to compete with the classic details of the original Genomorphs, but their clean appearance cannot be denied. The two-faced connections resemble twigs, the rough skin is reminiscent of a machine, and the essence of Alien is present in both organic and artificial aspects. As a 3D version of artist H.R. Giger's original creation, it's no wonder I am still sitting here, entranced by the seventh episode of a main female character's survival against these creatures. The Genomorph's appearance remains epic, no matter how many times it is displayed. However, their shape-shifting abilities are not their most terrifying trait. The true horror lies in their ability to revert back to their original, stagnant form. Unlike Covenant's protomorphs, who may be beautiful, but do not need to bask in the morning light to appear shameful, the genomorphs in Romulus are truly fearsome. In one scene, he deliberately allows Mo to die in order to attract others to save him. The cunning, patience, and unexpected attack strategies set the Xenomorph apart from other Hollywood monsters. It is fascinating to know that, in an age dominated by computer technology, these creatures are still created and concealed by the film crew. In behind-the-scenes footage, we can even observe the remote control operation of the face-hugger props on the ground. This could be the reason for the lifelike appearance of the creature and a testament to the creativity of the team behind it. While Romulus has successfully captured 50% of the elegance of the Xenomorph, the film also impresses with its cleverly designed situations and attention to detail. The subtle nuances embedded in the creature's head add to the impact of the later scenes, and the film effectively utilizes available resources to create visually stunning sequences. For instance, the use of the alien's acid blood in a zero-gravity environment, or the terrifying image of facehuggers swimming in water. The trailer also features a scene where the X-ray machine reveals a villainous chestbuster grumbling inside the creature's chest, adding to the suspense. Another refreshing aspect of the film is the incorporation of a new wine bottle, creatively decorating familiar scenes to avoid monotony. Overall, watching the seventh movie was a thrilling experience. In short, Alien Romulus is a highly enjoyable monster film. While it may not contribute to expanding the world, as a viewer who values honesty, I find it difficult to resist the sixth installment's return to the franchise's roots. The film showcases the alien's greatest strengths, which is a pleasant surprise. The aesthetic quality is consistently top-notch, with beautiful frames that resemble paintings. The film also has an exciting atmosphere, clever construction, and a meticulous examination of the xenomorph species' characteristics. Alien Romulus is undoubtedly a standout in the 45-year-old franchise and serves as proof that despite Hollywood producing numerous monsters, they still pale in comparison to the giant shadow of Alien. This concludes my review. Goodbye, and enjoy the movie. May the Force be with you. I am going to make him an offer once more. Play as time passes. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs>